Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, the burnt out shell of a van that is all that is left. Arson investigators now taking a closer look at a fire as an arson at a Southside church. Fire happened at the Miracle Center Church on Commercial Avenue just outside of Loop 410. Our Josh Skernick is live there. Josh, you've been there for about an hour. What more have you found out? Good morning. I've had a better look inside. The seat, the interiors, the dash, everything that's not metal seems to be totally destroyed. There's also glass all over the ground here. This is going to be a huge cleanup this morning. Now, last night around 11, firefighters got a call for a structure fire here. What they found is this van underneath the metal awning on fire. They put it out quickly and the flames didn't spread to the building. They estimate the damage to be about $28,000. Now, as for this situation, they say it looks suspicious. Arson is investigating. Reporting live on the South Side, Josh Gernick, KSA 12 News. Thank you very much, Josh. Another local news testimony resumes this morning and the trial of a woman accused of selling a teenage girl for sex. From motels to truck stops, prosecutors say a 14-year-old girl was the victim of forced prostitution. Jasmine Sims is charged with compelling prostitution. Now, we are not identifying the victim. She is now 17 years old. We have deliberately distorted her picture. Tuesday, she told a Bear County jury how Sims and two men she knew only as Black and Mickey picked her up at a bus stop. Mickey um, was talking to Black and Jasmine, and he was saying that um, they were going to make some money off of me. And Mickey uh, was talking to Jasmine, and he told her to um, post me up and to uh, fix me up. Using the name Lady Famous, she said they posted her picture on a website called Backpage. Johns responded to the ad which led to the meetings at an east side motel and to a truck stop down the road. The victim said she had four encounters with men, two paid for sex, two declined because of her age. A conviction could mean life in prison for Sims. Lone Star Fugitive Task Force needs your help tracking down a man wanted for repeatedly sexually abusing a young girl. 32 year Jose Luis Solorzano Cuellar has been wanted for five months now. There's his mugshot. In May, a Comal County court issued an indictment for his arrest. They say he sexually assaulted and abused a girl younger than 14 years old on multiple occasions. He has not been seen since. Last known residence out at Canyon Lake. If you know this man or where he may be, call the task force at 210-657-8500. The family of a man stabbed to death more than a month ago is asking for help to find answers. Stephen Graves was killed in San Antonio back on September 17th. Someone stabbed the 56-year-old while in the 500 block of Ruiz Street that caused him to collapse and he died just outside a picnic store. Police are trying to piece the whole thing together. Find out what happened. His sister, Brenda Ross, says Graves had just moved into a new apartment two days before his murder, but would frequent the area near where the murder took place. Getting off the bus, was he waiting for a bus? Was, did someone drive up and push him out of a car? I don't know. We don't know, but the doctor told me he died instantly. <sighs> if we could just get our closure and uh, find out more, find the person who did it, I think I would, I would feel so much better and I could just move on. He had no known enemies, no one who wanted him dead. The only description police have is a man seen running from the scene. That man is described as being about 5'5", weighing between 140 and 150 pounds. He was wearing a navy blue outfit that day. It was September the 17th. Crime Stoppers is offering a reward of up to $5,000 for information that leads to an arrest. The number, 224-STOP. Any morning headlines, the fighting continues for the city of Mosul. Iraqi forces and Kurdish forces in their third day of an offensive trying to retake that city from ISIS. More than 25,000 troops have been mobilized, being supported by the U.S.-led coalition. They're now pushing towards larger villages and civilian centers. And overnight, we learned five more villages have now been reclaimed in the last 24 hours. Mosul is the largest urban area still controlled by ISIS forces. Well, deliberations will begin today in the rape trial against New York Knicks guard Derek Rose. Lawyers for both sides wrapped up their closing arguments last night and the jury was sent home. The victim claims Rose, along with two other men, sexually assaulted her back in 2013. 
607 right now. Now to the race for the White House, the third presidential de debate, rather, is tonight at the University of Las Vegas. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton will face off for one final showdown before the November election. ABC's Stephanie Ramos has a preview with what you should expect tonight. Hillary Clinton touching down in Las Vegas for a final one-on-one -on -one matchup against Donald Trump. Clinton spending the last few days in New York preparing for the debate, making no apologies as Donald Trump mocks her study habits. She's resting. Well, she rested for the last debate. She didn't do too well. Clinton's camp would disagree. Her team saying the debate prep pays off and the polls prove it. Tonight, Clinton is expected to go after Trump's rigged election claim, the slow release of hacked WikiLeaks emails and allegations so. I, of Trump's sexual misconduct. I have tremendous respect for women. With less than three weeks to go until Election Day, Trump will try to turn the page after a slew of recent allegations that he made unwanted sexual advances toward women in the past. At least nine women have now accused Trump of sexual misconduct. One of those women, a People magazine reporter who says that in 2005, she met with the Trumps for a profile story, but says when Melania was out of the room, Trump shut the door behind us, and within seconds, he was pushing me against the wall and forcing his tongue down my throat. Trump denies it. Why wasn't it part of the story? But People magazine published testimonials from five of the reporter's friends and colleagues who say she confided in them shortly after the alleged assault. Trump will also be pressed to defend his claims that the election is being rigged against him. President Obama calling him out on it. You start whining before the game's even over. If whenever things are going badly for you and you lose, you start blaming somebody else, then you don't have what it takes to be in this job. After tonight's debate, Clinton campaign officials say she'll have an aggressive schedule in these final weeks. As for Trump, he's predicting he'll win one of the greatest victories in political history. Stephanie Ramos, ABC News, Washington. Again, the third and final debate tonight at 8 o'clock. Watch it live right here on KSAT 12 and ABC, or you can live stream it on our website at KSAT.com. In a new poll from the University of Houston, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are within three percentage points of each other with Texans. 41% of Texas voters plan to back Trump, 38% support Clinton. That is huge, considering no Democrat has won Texas since the 70s. Since the year 2000, every Republican has carried the state by at least 11 percent. And when filtered by people who said they were very likely instead of going to Trump, go, very likely instead of going to vote, Trump's lead in Texas disappears. Both Trump and Clinton are sitting at 37 percent of voters. Forget celebrity endorsements. Now you can offer an endorsement for any political official or candidate on Facebook. Some of you are saying, oh, joy. <laughs> Facebook unveiled the endorsement feature Tuesday. You can post an endorsement on a user's profile page, even add an explanation about why you are making your personal endorsement. 610 right now, 78 degrees. How much time left till this is over? <laughs> the election? It's not going to be over soon enough, right? Uh, still ahead, the lieutenant governor is asking the public for help on behalf of orphans here in Texas. Conchetta Callahan will have details on that. And in our rocket scientist department, a man decides to feed wild alligators and ends up in the hospital. Somehow that just doesn't sound like a good idea. That's why it's in the rocket scientist department. Yeah, and that's why he's now in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Let's go take a live look outside. At about this time tomorrow, things are going to be changing. We're happy to welcome some cooler temperatures. It's going to finally feel like fall again around here. For a beautiful weekend forecast, Mike Osterhage is standing by. Welcome back to GMSA 614. A man bitten by an alligator while feeding them near Houston on Tuesday happened at a home in the suburb of Richmond. According to Fort Bend County deputies, the man was feeding the alligators at a nearby pond when one bit his hand and arm. Deputies said the man was taken to a hospital where he was listed in stable condition. It's not known if the man will continue feeding gators or will move on to pigeons or seagulls. Does he really need to have a sign put up, do not feed the alligators? I don't know, but do you see they're flying their news helicopter over the pond and they're all over the place? Yeah, this just doesn't seem smart to me. I... It doesn't to me either, Leslie. We agree on something. <laughs> Let's check in on the roadway and see how traffic's looking. Whoa.
Did you did you feel the earth move? You two agreed. It's a disturbance, wow. in, the, it's a disturbance right. in the forest. <laughs> right now, as we take a look, things still look pretty good out there on the highways. 21 at Grayson, no issues there. As we check some other areas there in the city, you can see that uh, right now, 35 at Thousand Oaks, north and south on lanes, running smoothly with no problems there. 604 Kyle Seal, but we are starting to see that little bit of congestion right now. Now it will get worse because it's only 615. So expect that line of eastbound traffic on 604 to get longer and slower longer and longer slower and yes all right thanks Marcus. unlike the uh, speed of the alligator that that's guy. just well, a crazy story instead of longer and slower let's talk about less you would humid and cooler we can do that and real quick i don't mean to call you out on air but we agree on a lot of things we and actually do one of the things we absolutely agree on is how much we're going to enjoy this cold front oh we're all looking forward to that mm -hmm. You always know when, you know, the seasons change and all that stuff. And what I'm leading up to is we use the calendar to change oh, yes. to talk about that. Mm -hmm. However, Farmer's Almanac and the Indian names for a lot of the full moons, because that's how they used to mark the, the changes and how the seasons were progressing. So you remember the harvest moon was in September. Okay. The moon okay. close the full moon closest to the autumnal equinox last you or this month. It was equinox. the um, hunter's moon. Drink. Now coming up in <laughs> November Off it in. is going to be what was known as the full beaver moon because this is where you would set the traps according to the uh, old farmer's almanac before the swamps all froze over so they could have plenty of uh, skins and, and furs before to the winter set in. And then this one's kind of obvious, though. The December full moon is the full cold moon, also called the long night's moon. So just a little bit of uh, lore for you there for the full moon names coming up here, according to the Old Farmer's Almanac. That's your Weather 101 lesson for today. Beautiful sunset over uh, Medina Lake last night. That's absolutely gorgeous with that sailboat right out there. We have a lot of clouds around this morning and a lot of humidity as well. Temperatures are going to be up to normal high by noon already. We've been seeing that all week long. And then 89 for a high temperature later on today with partly sunny skies. 76 right now, Hondo, 77 in town. These temperatures are about 15 to 20 degrees above normal. We should be in the upper 50s right now. And the humidity remains extremely high. We do have a lot of fog off to the east. Victoria Beeville has the thickest fog, but it has been dropping a little bit in Valley. So watch out for more fog as the morning progresses. We will keep some clouds around throughout the afternoon hours, then overnight cloudier skies. And then here comes the front tomorrow morning. We'll start to see the wind shift by roughly this time tomorrow, but then mid morning is when the winds are really going to start to pick up. A couple of showers are going to be squeezed out with that front and then in behind it we have got gorgeous weather for Friday as well as the weekend. Friday morning is going to be just fantastic. As far as today, well, if you like humidity, it's fantastic for you. Mostly cloudy skies, 82 degrees at noon and then a high temperature today up to 89 with partly sunny skies. Tomorrow just we have uh, the front moving on through here. I was going to say just fantastic, jump ahead of myself because Friday is going to be the fantastic day. Although we will stay at 80 degrees for a high temperature tomorrow with a couple of showers around here. And the weekend, Saturday morning, wonderful. Sunday, fantastic as well. I know I've been using the word fantastic a lot, but that's the best way to describe it or sens sensational. Sunday is a good looking day with a couple of more clouds around here in the morning. Speaking of moons, by the way, or the moon, I should say, the new moon is going to be on October 30th, so there won't be a moon out there on Halloween. Well, that wow. means no werewolves, right? Oh, good point. So there you oh, go. Oh, darn. Yeah. And it seems to me when you say sensational, Where? You, sensational. What are you looking at? Yeah. I don't know. You were totally lost. Girl, <laughs> come back here. I'm here. I think when you say sensational, you should do the jazz hands. Let's not say we did. <laughs> I was going to say you said werewolf. I was going to say their wolf. So. Okay. Confronted by a critical backlog. Hi, everybody. With some 28,000 abused and neglected children statewide, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick is making an urgent appeal. He's asking faith-based communities to help recruit foster families to provide them safe, temporary shelter. Conchetta Callahan joins us live in the newsroom. And Conchetta, one of the city's largest churches, is already part of this wider effort. 
Pastor Sam Warren at Oak Hills Church says his congregation is among 18 San Antonio churches that work with families interested in either adopting or fostering. Already at capacity, the children's shelter last year saw 2,700 children who were abused and neglected sent out of San Antonio. The shelter's foster care program had no place to put them, an indication of the state crisis that prompted the lieutenant governor's appeal on his website. Child advocates say the initiative during National Adoption month in November is urgently needed. Not only an awareness of the need, awareness of the call, but to provide uh, training and equipping and support for those families that choose to do that. The Children's Shelter has information sessions every week or every other week, I should say, for anyone interested in being licensed as a foster parent. You can call the shelter for a schedule. You can also go to ksat.com. We have more information on how you can help and details on the Oak Hills Church programs that they offer. That's all posted with this story at ksat.com. Mark, Leslie. Conchetta, thank you very much. 620, 77 degrees. The latest trailer for the new action movie Assassin's Creed is out, and we're going to take a peek at it coming up in the spotlight. Plus, someone called police on Maroon 5 frontman Adam Levine saying he is abusing his family. It's a story that will probably make you mad. That's coming up in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Police in Los Angeles say last week an anonymous caller phoned in claiming that Maroon 5 frontman Adam Levine was abusing his supermodel wife, Behati Prinslow, and four-week-old daughter, Dusty Rose. Anytime an allegation is made where a child is being uh, abused, uh, and in particular a very young child, they're going to immediately want to jump on it. ABC News learning the LAPD's juvenile division investigated the complaint and found no evidence of abuse and closed the case. But this morning, while police say no charges have been filed, some experts say the Grammy winner himself was victimized. The call to police reminiscent of swatting, making a prank call to trigger a SWAT team response on innocent victims. And Dan Abrams weighs in live at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kana Whitworth, ABC News, New York. In the spotlight this morning, the new trailer for the movie Assassin's Creed is out. Let's take a peek. Welcome to the Spanish Inquisition. This is what I saw in there and felt real. It was. The movie is based on the popular video game series by Ubisoft. Michael Fassbender plays a man who relives the memories of his 15th century Spanish ancestors thanks to some future technology. The movie is set to hit theaters December 21st. Forget gold and platinum, Uptown Funk is diamond. Less than two years after the Mark Ronson smash hit featuring Bruno Mars put everyone on the dance floor, the Recording Industry Association of America has certified the, so certified rather the song's diamond status. That means it has sold more than 10 million copies. As for the video, it's only been viewed about two billion times. It's true, though. When you hear Uptown Funk, you have to dance. It's catchy. Most Bruno Mars songs are. Yeah, I love it. It's 626 now, 77 degrees outside. And Mark Ronson. Still ahead, now that the leaves are changing, some of you might need to start thinking about cleaning your gutters. If that's a chore you hate, we may have a solution for you. Coming up on GMSA. Welcome back, everybody. It is 630.